100 million years ago, dinosaurs roamed the earth. One of those dinosaurs walked through the forests of ancient Burma, where a handful of feathers fell from it. But those feathers had something strange on them. Some insects. And the whole situation ended up getting preserved in amber. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Please like and subscribe. It helps me out a lot. Today, I wanted to talk about an ancient mystery concerning some strange insects that began in 2019 and was finally wrapped up, or at least seemingly wrapped up, in 2022. And this mystery concerns some dinosaur feathers, which were found preserved in amber in the Myanmar amber pits. The paper which revealed these insects originally was called New Insects Feeding on Dinosaur Feathers in the Mid-Cretaceous Amber. And this was published in the journal Nature, and it received quite a bit of fanfare at the end of 2019. And in this paper, the authors seemingly described an insect, uh, or a group of insects, 10 in total, which were apparently caught in the amber feeding on these feathers. And the authors originally diagnosed these insects as uh, belonging to the order Theraptera, which, if you aren't familiar, are the lice, or these are the animal lice. But the Theraptera are way down here, and these are the lice. So the Socoptera are usually referred to as plant lice, and they are generally found on trees and such, and they usually just feed on fungus and things. But the Theraptera are things like body lice and crab lice and bird lice, uh, and these are all parasitic. These are ectoparasites. Uh, the ones on mammals tend to feed on blood, but many of the ones on birds tend to eat feathers, the little keratin filaments of the feathers, which is what was thought to be discovered in this article. The article goes into pretty intricate detail about what they found, and I will link these articles in the description. They are Two of them are open access. One of them is not. They go into pretty significant detail about what they found, and you can see these little uh, insects in the amber here and here and here. There were 10 of them total. And if you zoom in on them, this is what you see. And these researchers got fairly good photographs, uh, micro photographs of these nymphs. These are not adult insects. These are immature, but they were scattered amongst the feathers. Some of them appeared to be attached to the feathers around areas of damage. Uh, and others were seemingly knocked loose from the feathers and just kind of isolated in the amber. But this is the microphotograph and the artist's rendition of what these authors uh, thought they could see. So you have a number of characteristics. You have simple eyes. These are singul singular omatidia, one lens eyes. Very, very simple. You have what appears to be fairly short antennae, maybe four segments. Uh, four to six segments, something like that. Strangely modified uh, forelimbs, where there seems to be three tarsi on relatively long legs for this body size, but the body isn't uh, particularly uh, well-shaped. The, the body is extremely oval. There isn't any constriction between the abdomen and thorax or between the thorax and head. They could see some spiracles on the side of the body, and additionally, they saw a fairly large CD over various parts of the body and what appears to be a single large claw. So one tar pretarsal claw. So in their rendition, one of the things that they mentioned that they thought was very strange were these very strange mandible structures, which is what you see here. It's not very clear in the amber at all, but what you could see are what they thought were two mandibles with palps, which is very strange. Mandibles don't generally have palps in insects, uh, but the maxillae, which are the secondary mouth parts, will frequently have palps attached to them. Or maybe the mandibles were missing and these were just the maxillae with uh, maxillary palps onto them. Because this had palp or because this had mandibles, they were fairly confident that what they were looking at was the nymph of some sort of louse. So uh, either a blood feeding louse or a feather feeding louse. And in this case, it would be based on the damage around the feathers associated with the uh, insects in the amber, they were fairly confident that this was uh, some sort of bird louse, but in this case, a dinosaur louse. Uh, but typical of bird lice, they would be uh, some sort of louse that ate the keratin filaments of feather. So this is what their rendition, their artistic rendition of this. 
And this is where uh, I think most entomologists would start thinking, okay, if this is what you think it looks like based off of what you see in the amber and I'm not missing anything, this doesn't look like a louse. This looks something more similar to a, a, cox, a pseudococcid or a coccid or a scale of some sort, the coxoidea, which are homopterans, just based off of this artist's rendition. But they continued on with this. They found uh, one of these embedded in the feathers, uh, seemingly attached to it. They, it seemed like their tarsi were uh, hooked onto the feathers, which is something that lice do. Lice frequently have these little crab claws uh, on their fore legs, which they use to hold on to hairs and feathers. This is a crab louse. Uh, and you can see their four limbs have these little crab claws on them, uh, which they use to hold on to hair. They did as best they could with the imaging, considering that you don't have any control over the positioning of these insects in the amber. Uh, this is where the mystery starts to get interesting. So why this receives such fanfare is up until this point, there had not been any ectoparasites, which were insects, which had been found preserved in Mesozoic amber. So there were no uh, dinosaur ectoparasites preserved other than ticks uh, at this point. Uh, so finding a new type of ectoparasite preserved in amber with the uh, seemingly the substrate that it was found on was a big deal. Like I said, in the artist rendition of this, this, oh, this doesn't seem right. And I say that because bird lice, feather feeding lice, look like this. Uh, so they have a fa fairly large head. There are obvious constrictions between the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. The legs are similar, but uh, different. The antennae are very different. The eyes are very different when present. So this is what a typical bird louse looks like. This is what a mammalian uh, crab louse looks like. And apparently other entomologists at the time also had some red flags going off. So a number of other authors began to look into this, and they wanted to see the amber and the insects. A series of other papers followed up this original paper in 2021 and 2022. The first, which was published, was called Insects with 100 Million Year Old Dinosaur Feathers Are Not Ectoparasites. And this by David Grimaldi, who is very famous uh, in the entomological circles, was also published in Nature and is a kind of very uh, strong refutation of the original paper. And what he goes into it are all of the morphological characteristics which he believes have been misinterpreted. So these are uh, pictures of the amber insects that were published in the original and his own photographs and renditions, not of the ones in amber, but of other insects that he had worked with. So the issue with these insects that were apparently found in the amber is that they are missing a lot of the characteristics which you would associate with Theraptera, the true lice. There are several distinctive characteristics of these specimens, which point to them being actually scales or coxoid, coxoidia, or mealybugs, uh, including their small size, their obvious body shape. You have this, you know, broadly oval body shape. They have extremely reduced eyes. Like I said, they only have the, those one lens eyes, that one omatidia. Uh, the antennae appear to have between four and six antennomeres, which is pretty typical for scale insects. The tarsomeres seem to be reduced, and there's no, they have a one segment claw. They don't have that crab claw, which is very common with Theraptera uh, in order to hold on to feathers or to hair. And if we go back to the structure of that mouth, this is what the original authors thought the mouth looked like. And if you look at, you know, the amber picture over here, it's really hard to see those structures. And what Grimaldi thinks happened, or what he thinks the authors were looking at, is the Clypeus. On insects, there is a segment of the face called the Clypeus. It's above the mouth. And on scale insects, this here is a mealybug. This is Pherisia. This is a pseudococcid, which is not the same group as this insect in question, but it is very closely related. This area here is the Clypeus. And in these sorts of insects, it's very, very muscular. And so he thinks that what they were looking at was kind of an expansion of this muscular Clypeus because scale insects don't have mandibles. They have uh, piercing sucking mouth parts. In that obscured mouth part area, which you see down here, what is likely happening is that you can't see the stylet formed 
uh, in a fresher specimen like you can here. The stylet is made up of a series of uh, very filamentous mouth parts. So the mandibles, mandibles become very filamentous, the maxillae become very filamentous, and then the labium acts as a sheath to hold it all together. It's very, very thin, it's very, very delicate, and it can be busted off. But he is convinced that what actually is happening here is that this is a scale insect mixed in with the feathers, or 10 scale insects mixed in with the feathers. And then the question becomes, well, how did a bunch of scale insects, which are plant feeders, end up mixed with uh, a bunch of feathers from a dinosaur trapped in amber? And his thought was, well, maybe it's just coincidental. Maybe these feathers were on the ground uh, and a bunch of insects were also on the ground and it all happened to get trapped in amber. And it has nothing to do with the damage that is actually on the uh, on the dinosaur feathers. These feathers could have been damaged by any number of other insects present around a, a dinosaur nest or a bird's nest. Uh, and it's not related at all. This is all just coincidental. So then a third paper comes out. Crawlers of the scale insect Mesothyrus. Uh, on feathers of a Burmese amber wind transport or foracy on dinosaurs, question mark. This paper tried to explain why this mystery exists. Uh, first, it verifies everything that Grimaldi said. Th these are not parasitic lice, which are on these dinosaur feathers. These are definitely some sort of coxoid, probably in the family Xylococcidae, which are very closely related to uh, pseudococcids. They're a very basal group of the coccids. And you might be more familiar with these as called mealybugs. They are very, very common on plants, uh, and they generally feed on the sap of plants. They are generally covered in this sort of white wax for protection, but if you strip away all that wax, you get something that looks like this. This is Ferrisia virgata, and if you zoom in further on this, you can see it has a lot of the same structures. So these longer antennae, these sort of hooked four legs, this swollen structure around the mouth, a very oval body. And if you compare that with the original, the original pictures of this in amber, you can see that it's very, very similar. And remember, these are nymphs, so they don't have the full body structure of an adult insect, which makes identification a little more difficult. But this is what the nymph of a, a coccid looks like, a coccid crawler. So in this new paper, what he attempted to explain was potential ways that plant feeders could end up mixed with the feathers of a dinosaur. And this includes things like honeydew feeding. It's well known that many birds and lizards and geckos, things like that, will selectively feed on the honeydew, which is excreted from scale insects. Especially during times of drought or famine, they will specifically search out scale insects in order to eat the sugary liquid, if not eat the insects themselves. So maybe a dinosaur was feeding on either the honeydew or the scale insects. Some of them got mixed up in the feathers. And so it was just kind of accidental. It could also be that these con uh, these uh, crawlers were congregating on uh, twigs, the tips of twigs, or maybe a feather that was trapped in a bush, because during this stage, the crawlers are extremely mobile. This is really the only really mobile stage of these scale insects. And they will frequently try to get to the tips of plants or to the tips of a feather that's on a bush or something like that in order to get caught by the wind and disperse via the air. They're very, very small, very, very light, and they can do this. So maybe these 10 insects were just congregating on the tip of a little feather that was in a bush in order to uh, disperse, and they ended up being blown with that feather, and the feather fell into some uh, plant resin, and there they became preserved. The other potential solution to this problem is that maybe one of these dinosaurs were walking through the brush and brushed against a plant with these uh, coccid crawlers on them, or these coxoid crawlers on them, and they latched onto the feathers as a form of foracy, which is a type of symbiosis between creatures in which one creature uses another creature intentionally to get around, or sometimes unintentionally. Uh, this is a, a method of dispersal that many insects use to get around. So maybe this is a very early form of foracy, which happened to just get trapped in the amber. So there you have it. One, what was once breaking news about new parasitic dinosaur feeders ended up being a much more interesting story about potential foracy in the mid-Cretaceous being trapped in amber for all time. So uh, 
like uh, like and subscribe again and i'll talk to you guys later